morning. Tonight I am making Italian beef in the crock pot. So I have this arm roast here and it's a pretty nice size roast. Actually, it's got the bone in, which is going to give it some really good flavor. There's not a ton of fat on here even that I have to trim off, but it has some good marbling in here. So I am going to put this guy in the crock pot and then I didn't even know this existed. I found this um, a while back at Kroger. I'm just now Walmart. I think a Walmart. I'm just now getting around to using it. Um, but I didn't even know there was such a thing as this seasoning packet for Italian beef. So I think this is going to be great. I'm just going to follow the package directions on this little envelope here. And we're going to have Italian beef tonight. So this is um, first time obviously making this, but we've had Italian beef before at restaurants. Um, so delicious. Uh, Portillo's, I think, especially has a really good Italian beef sandwich. So we're going to get going on this thing, and hopefully this will be delicious. I have high hopes for it. Okay, so on the back of this, it says, let's let it focus here. Here we go. So you mix the contents of this packet um, with three-fourths a cup of water in the slow cooker. You add your beef roast, and then... Um, add enough water to cover the roast. So I've already put my roast in the crock pot, so I'm just gonna mix this seasoning with the water in the cup here, stir it together, pour it all over, and then I'll add more water to cover the roast, and we're gonna get this going. All right, got my water. Smell this, see what it smells like. Mm, it smells good. It smells extremely flavorful. It's a lot of seasoning in there. All right. Quick stir. Normally I just pour everything in the crock pot and let it do its business, but I want to make sure and get this one mixed up really well. And oh, I see some red pepper flakes in there. Yeah, this looks really good. Okay, let's get this poured over top. We've got a really dreary day today, so I don't probably have the best lighting, but this roast looks so good. All right, here we go. I mean, this thing is full, full of seasonings. You can just see it. Wow, oh my goodness. You guys see that? Full of seasoning. All right, so it looks like in order to cover the roast, I need another couple cups of water. Okay, so here's a couple more cups going in. Yeah, that's just about right. I'm gonna put a smidge more. All right, now I'm gonna put mine on high and then I may kick it down to low, just depending, but I think this is gonna be great. All right, I had some errands to run today and I'm home and I'm testing this now for doneness. Look at that. It appears to be very tender. I'm just gonna turn this down to keep warm. I'm gonna go ahead and move ahead to the bread that I got to serve this on. Um, if you remember the back of the package, if you saw it there, it says to serve on a, I think it said a hard roll. So I ended up just going with this French bread that I picked up at Walmart. I toasted it up in my air fryer and I'm just gonna go ahead and shred up my meat and get it ready for the sandwiches.
this sandwich was so delicious. The bread had already kind of started softening the cheese. Just put it all together there. The crunchy, crunchy bread. This was so good. I just served some french fries on the side that I did in the air fryer. But after I looked at this as I was recording it, I decided this needed a little bit more beef because there was a lot of bread there. So, yes, we added on some more beef and that put it over the top. This was so delicious. I already can't wait to make this again using that same seasoning packet. awesome if you have some leftover roast there are so many things you can do with it so this is what we had left of the Italian beef this is a pretty good size bowl here it looks small but it's a pretty good size bowl and James asked did we have any egg noodles and we did so I cooked those up per package directions I love these wide ones that's a really good brand that I showed there that I use at the end made I think is the brand look how yummy these are I just cooked these up and then I added in the rest of that broth that came off of the roast and these made some amazing beef and noodles. So this is what James had and then I was ready for round two of the Italian beef sandwiches. I just made a little bit of a smaller one this evening and I actually ate it kind of open face. I put a little bit of mayonnaise on there as well as the horseradish cream sauce again. This was really delicious the second time around. And as I said, the beef and noodles, so good too. So anytime you can cook once and eat twice, that is a win-win in my kitchen at least. All right, I've got my trusty yellow kettle to start out tonight's dinner. And I am making a pot of chili. Now, before you decide to fast forward through this, because most everybody knows how to make chili, I think the fun part about chili is the variety of things that you can put into it. Leave a comment below. Are you one who follows a recipe for chili every time? Or are you a wing it, use what you've got, use up what needs to be used up, how do you make chili? So leave that in the comments below. I don't follow a recipe. I'm sure you already knew that. I just wing it. So I think that's great with chili. You can use what needs to be used in your uh, pantry, in your refrigerator, and pull together a delicious pot of chili. And it can be different every time based on that. So I normally don't put a orange bell pepper in my chili but I had one that needed to be used of course you have to have some onion in there that's a given and then I don't normally put fresh tomato in my chili but I had a tomato that needed to be used and I thought this is as good a time as any to just toss that in the chili as well so we're just gonna get this thing going we're gonna see what we put in here and use what we have in the fridge and in the pantry to pull it together. I also added in a lot of fresh garlic. Um, that's always very flavorful to add into soups and chilies. And then this is what I pulled out of my pantry. So I'm gonna put all of these in and then I'm gonna move on to my dry spices from my spice cabinet. <laughs> I could sit around and wait all day You lay easy on my mind Like a candle I just burn away All we really have is time Take it with any 
chili fed a lot of people this day we had some work going on around here and it was cold so this was just perfect I put a slice of American cheese in mine and some jalapenos some saltine crackers and then also I made up a big 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 platter I used a whole loaf of bread and made lots of grilled cheese sandwiches I used some gouda and some American on those and so this pot of chili and grilled cheese were perfect for this day all right, this is a new recipe that I am trying for this particular day, and it is called taco spaghetti. I am following the recipe um, pretty closely that was shared by Taylor Elmore. I've heard her talk about that on her channel before, and I've seen a lot of taco spaghetti recipes on Pinterest, but hers seemed very easy, and I decided to go with that one. So you want to brown up your ground beef, and after you drain off all the fat, you're gonna add in one packet of taco seasoning. Now, I did not have taco seasoning. I usually don't buy that, so I just use what I have in my spice cabinet to season that up. So salt, pepper, cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, that usually does the trick, it gives you a good, delicious taco flavor. After you have that all mixed in, um, you are going to need to get your water boiling for your pasta. I think it called for just regular spaghetti noodles. I used a box of linguine. You cook up the whole box and get that drained off. Also, you were gonna work on cubing up the Velveeta cheese. I just have the copycat Velveeta that I buy at Aldi, and you're gonna use half of the block. I think that's a pound. So you get that cubed up, and you're gonna add that in to your ground beef so that begins to melt along with adding in a can of Rotel. the remaining portion of the French bread that I used earlier for the Italian beef sandwiches. So I just cut that into slices, buttered it up, added on some garlic powder and some parsley flakes. I'm going to bake that in the oven to serve alongside this taco spaghetti. Here's the mixture now that it's all melted together. It really looks yummy. It kind of looks like a, a cheese dip of some sort, like the uh, queso and the ground beef and the rotel. So adding in now the pasta, and I'm just getting that sort of incorporated in, stirred around, and then the ingredient that makes it, you know, really a taco spaghetti flavor is the enchilada sauce. It called for a 15 ounce can. I had one of the larger cans, so I just poured in about half of that and just gave that a stir to get that incorporated. Now, interesting thing is I'm not a huge fan of enchilada sauce plain. When I make enchiladas, the recipe that I use uses a can of cream of mushroom soup in with it and it really tames down the enchilada sauce. When I'm out at a Mexican restaurant, I never get the red sauce on enchiladas. So what I did to kind of tame down that flavor a little bit is I used some heavy cream. So it kind of just made it creamier. Um, I felt like I really enjoyed that much better. And then I remembered I had just a little bit of sour cream. I went ahead and added that in as well. Like I said, that just kind of gave it more of a creamy flavor. 
the enchilada sauce, especially that brand, is pretty strong. So that helped just for my particular preferences. I put some fresh cilantro over the top and then I had some Monterey Jack cheese and I shredded that up and put that over the top, baked it in the oven for about half an hour just so everything was heated through and let me tell you, it was delicious. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We were feeding extra people that day as well and they really, really loved it and came back for seconds. So I will definitely be making this one again. And now for the last meal I'm going to show you. I did not set out to make all beef recipes for this particular week, but that's just how it turned out. So the last one I'm going to show you is for meatloaf. I am making um, a large meatloaf for family night, three pounds of ground beef, some saltine crackers I have in there. Then for my freezer, I've told you before about freezing leftover tomato paste. That's what this is. You can just flatten it out and freeze it and look, it just breaks off into chunks straight out of the freezer. I think that is so handy, just break off what you need. I'm using the whole entire thing. And since I didn't use very many saltine crackers, I'm gonna also use some old fashioned oats. Uh, funny thing is I never use crackers or oats, but if you've been around here for a little while, you know I am working through using what I have in my pantry in my stock so that's what i used this time i'm going in with a little worcester sauce i'm using some lowry seasoning salt some garlic powder some onion powder just pulling from my spice cabinet again now i'm going to add in my eggs i went with two since i'm using three pounds of ground beef and i decided to put this on my stand mixer and give it a whirl and my goodness gracious did it uh, come up to the brim. I, I had to really give my stand mixer here, my KitchenAid, a good wash down when I was done, but it did the work for me because that is a lot of ground beef. Look at that. That is like the size of a basketball. So I get this all smushed down in my pan and uh, get it in the oven. I normally make um, a concoction for the top with like ketchup or brown sugar or tomatoes, uh, chunked tomato. Um, from the can and brown sugar but this time I just did plain old ketchup and I didn't do that until the last few minutes in the oven. I cooked up these Margaret Holmes seasoned mixed greens. They were so delicious and of course just some usual suspects that go along with meatloaf. Look at that. It was so good. I made a big pan of cornbread which I've made on my channel many times. Some homemade macaroni and cheese. Again, something I've shown over and over. There are the mixed greens that I cooked up. James had mentioned thinking peas sounded good, so I cooked up some peas and a big old kettle of mashed potatoes. You gotta have that when you make meatloaf. This was family night, I don't know if I said that or not. But this was all so good, rave reviews from everyone. It was just a comfort meal that we all love and enjoy that I hadn't made in a long time. And in good leftover fashion, I think meatloaf is perfect when it's leftover to fry up in a skillet and make a meatloaf sandwich. Uh, leave down in the comments below if you like to do that with leftover meatloaf. So we did have some leftover and that's exactly what we did. So I just put my uh, skillet on here, fried up this meatloaf and James didn't have his as a sandwich, but that's what I thought sounded really good. I put a little um, Miracle Whip, which I also thought sounded really good on my bread, soft bread, meatloaf sandwich with some of the leftover macaroni and cheese. You guys, thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate having you around here every time you stop in. It just is just makes my day every time I can talk to you in the comments. I hope you are all doing well. And, uh, uh, spring is just right around the corner. We are just all so thankful for that, I am sure. All right, you guys, I will see you again next week. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise.